Okay, so types of cardiovascular surgery. So we have angioplasty is the most common closed heart surgery. And this is where they insert a catheter, which is like a long slender tube into a coronary artery with a balloon that inflates to increase the blood flow. So they kind of like, um, kind of open up the blue, you kind of see this in the picture. They insert the catheter, they kind of open up the um, vessel with the balloon. There's kind of like a little um, stent that holds the um, the, valve, the vessel open, and then they remove, they deflate the, and remove the, the balloon, but the stent's left. Um, so stents placed in conjunction with an angioplasty. It's a mesh-like metal stent. That's what this little guy is over here. Placed to open up the area to allow better blood flow. Then there's bypass surgeries. It could be single, double, triple bypass. Common surgery to replace um, blocked arteries. And then valvular defects, repair or replacement, frequent surgery. High risk for infection and um, and. Infective endocarditis must be premedicated, so we have just talked about that. With um, so valvular defects is our big red flag. Heart transplants also can also um, at patients may need um, premedication, but really you're going to want to anybody who has had a heart transplant, it will probably make you feel much better to consult their physician unless it's been years out. They're very stable, um, they're very healthy, and you know. They've, um, they know their status, but if it's a new patient to you, it's, um, sometimes it just the clinician will feel much better if they, um, consult with the physician and just find out any areas that they should be aware of, um, anything that, you know, may be a concern if the patient is stable or not, you know, but a heart transplant's pretty major. So a patient is probably fairly well versed in their own health status, but, um, Physicians should always be part of that conversation. Um, let's see. Let's see if I missed anything here. A major concern um, of a patient who's had a heart transplant is infection. And then, of course, transplant rejection. If you're seeing somebody who has just recently gone through this, these are things you think about. Will they have, they're at a much higher risk for infection, and is the heart going to be rejected? Before care, consultation with the patient's cardiologist is highly recommended to determine if additional premedication is indicated. However, most transplant patients are on long-term preventive antibiotic therapy to control systemic bacteremias, so they probably don't need an additional antibiotic. They're probably already on heavy antibiotics. They also are placed on immunosuppressant drugs such as um, cyclosporin to reduce the possibility of rejection. So they're immunocompromised. So they're, they're going to be pretty sick. Um, everything's going to be very, um, their chances are that you're not going to see them when everything is real touch and go. It'll be a little ways out. Maybe they've more stabilized, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Oral manifestation of cardiovascular medications. There can be a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of drugs that, um, have an oral manifestation. Uh, so we want to kind of familiar, familiarize ourselves with really the most common ones. A higher risk for oral disease, encourage regular care and good oral hygiene. This is just across the board. P patients who have cardiovascular disease, um, depending on their medication, we just know that um, we know about that relationship between um, heart disease and periodontal disease, and we just want to be a part of that conversation with our patients. A lot of the drugs cause xerostomia, so we know that um, we want to recommend, you know, maybe xylitol, fluoride treatments, saliva substitutes, or something to moisten the tissue. They could have altered taste depending on some of their medications, gingival enlargement, and oftentimes when there's gingival enlargement, the better oral hygiene, the less bacteria in their mouth, then the less um, you'll see that um, reaction in the gum tissue. So if they're real meticulous about their care, they'll have um, less gingival enlargement if they tend have a tendency if the medication has a tendency to cause that. Um, salivary gland pain can be a, um, a manifestation. Um, 
exaggerating a patient's current condition so it can um, worsen, you know, their inflammation and gingivitis and things like that. Opportunistic infections, candidiasis, um, her pet, uh, her herpes or herpetic lesions, thing different, any kind of uh, opportunistic infection, secondary bacterial infections, things like that. Um, spontaneous oral bleeding if they're heavy on heavy anticoagulants. There's a really good table if you have the fifth edition. I is it, it was too big to get it on a slide. Um, maybe if you can, if you don't have it, if you can ask a classmate to make a photocopy of it for you. It's just a good, it's a dental hygiene care implications for individuals with cardiovascular disease. It's just a good summary table. Um, so I would recommend um, even printing it out and laminating it. Just to, it's a good um, reminder of some of the really big points to that you that you want to be aware of with these patients. And then here is a summary. The next slides, um, next three slides are types of medications. The brand name, the geriatric name, indication for use, and then the oral implications. So these are just some good, um, and this is also in the books, both four and five um, have these tables. Um, so, and then of course we have lexicom that helps us with these because it's hard to remember everything. Um, but you know, a lot of these we'll start, we'll see a lot of. Um, and so it's good for, good to know some of, some of the, um, the major oral implications. Like with, um, digoxin, we see that a lot. So knowing that it can increase gag reflex, that's really important when we're taking x-rays on a patient. If we see that that's what they're taking, we, you know, we want to be aware of that. So it's really good to, um, try and commit, uh, some of these to memory, or at least have this very handy where you can pull it up and you know, remind, or, you know, you could just write it as a pop-up in your patient's chart. That's a wonderful way. If they're still taking something, it can pop up, say, you know, patients, um, you know, has xerostomia or patient gags easily is taking digoxin or something like that. Um, you know, so that way you can add those to your patients as you see them. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. And then the last two slides. So just more, more um, drugs and oral implications. So that is it. So I encourage you to go through those. Um, be fairly familiar with these. I know you already had oral med as a, um, as a course. So I'm not going to heavy um, test you on necessarily the medications. However, um, they will, they will pop up to haunt you on boards and whatnot. So it is good to have um, these, these uh, medications sort of at least before.